Welcome again to the NPTEL course Food Packaging Technology. So in the previous session we had discussed about uh, the different uh, types of pulping techniques. We had seen mechanical pulping, chemical pulping and semi-chemical pulping. We have also seen what is chemi-mechanical pulping and after pulping the uh, pulps are moved to the sheet processing section and sheet processing it is the production of paper of varying types and this depends upon the raw material and type of paper that is required in the final stage and most of the paper and paper board productions these include stock preparation, paper machine processing and finishing process. The stock preparation includes mechanical squeezing and pounding of cellulose fibers which penetrates the water to enter into the structure which causes swelling and also makes it flexible. Usually mechanical action, it separates the fibers, the small fibrils, they are separated at microscopic level and this uh, beating, it reduces the rate of drainage from the fiber mat and producing a dense paper of which has height and size strength, low porosity and stiffness and so this what it is done during stock preparation. We prepare the fibers, pulping it releases the fiber but then these fibers they need to hold the water so the flexibility can be improved and this is done using beating. Generally use Hollander beater for the beating purpose. A Hollander beater is an oval tank which contains a heavy roll which revolves against the bed plate and the roll is set accurately with respect to the bed plate and it's a progressive adjustment and beta can hold a stock of around 135 to 1350 kg and it has various uh, dimensions the common one is 7 meter long 4 meter width and 1 meter diameter and there is a central partition in the center which helps in the continuous movement of the pulp or the stock so if you look at this uh, picture here this is a hollander beta and you can see the central division here which partition which helps in the movement of the stock. So pulp is put into the beater and water is added to it which facilitates the circulation of mass into the Holland beater. For this the role also plays a very important role. It helps in circulating in the movement of the mass and as the beating proceeds the revolving role is lowered and it rides on the fiber so fiber is placed between the roll and the bed plate and it runs completely over the fiber this splits up the fibrils the fibers are split into small fibrils they are cut into uh, similar to hair and uh, very thin fibrils and this helps in increasing the absorption of water and when the water absorption increases they become slimy in nature so the beaten fibers they are drained slowly by putting the pulp over the wire and the bond and beating also results in rubbing of fibers against each other which also produces friction and breakdown of the fibrils. This is the general procedure what we have been discussing. Woods are collected and debarked. They are ground and chipped and after chipping these are screened and the unwanted particles which are larger in size these are removed these are washed after screening and these are passed into the digester now you can see here the digester which has a conical v-shaped bottom and a dome shaped top inside the digester the chemical digesting is done and these digested materials they are subjected to bleaching and then these are beaten and the pulp is used for developing the paper now this is a schematic first paper machine which was developed by Louis Robert and uh, this is a conical refiner machine which helps in improving the quality. During the beating process we can also add additives and other mixing agents like for sizing and for filling and dyes. These can also be added during the beating process and uh, sometimes we use uh, the perforated cylinders. So these perforated cylinders they are partially immersed in the beating stock. So this helps in removing the water and in modern mills we can go for continuous refiner also. And where we are using bale pulp, the pulp which has been stored as a sheet, they can also be used in the beater. Initially they are pulper, they are defibred using pulper. This bale pulp can also be used for developing the paper sheets. But initially they need to be pulped and they are subjected to pulping in pulper. Pulpers are large open vessels with one or more blades rotating 
and these circulate the pulp water mixture and separate fibers and also blades they transform the bales into a smooth mixture so it's a slimy appearance but these pulpers they do not have freeness and it also causes fibrillation of the fibers and the capacity of pulper is around 900 kg and the horsepower used is 150 so we can go for higher pulpers also and the fiber content is around 6% then uh, the papers are subjected to sizing, that is the treatment of paper to prevent aqueous ink solutions to be soaked. Usually the papers are used for printing and the ink should not be soaked into the paper. It should be clear and legible. So for this reason, sizing is done and for sizing we use rosin soap, which is dispersed in stock, that is 1 to 5% of fiber. According to the amount of fiber, 1 to 5% of rosin can be dispersed in the stock solution. We are also using aluminum sulfate or alum as a coupling agent. So the acidity of alum, it precipitates the resin and rosin dispersion and the positively charged aluminum ions and aluminum hydroxides, they flock together and to the negatively charged fiber surface. So this helps in sizing the paper. And paper which are intended for writing purpose and printing, they need to be have brightness or they should also contain white pigments or fillers so that can also be added during beating process and when we add fillers or whitening pigment they improve the brightness of the paper opacity is also increased and also it smoothens the surface so thereby the receptivity of the ink increases the inks will not spread on the surface of the paper so generally we use clay titanium dioxide is also used as an admixture calcium carbonate is used as a filler which imparts brightness and opacity and ink receptiveness there are other fillers like zinc oxide zinc sulfide hydrated silica calcium sulfate hydrated alumina talc barium barium sulfate etc which can also be used as a filler and the filler composition is like 1 to 10 percent of the fiber and colored papers, these are dyed papers, they are dyed with colors and this can be used direct dyeing or basic dyeing. In dyeing, there is a natural affinity to the cellulose. We are using pure cellulose and the dye will have a definity towards the cellulose. In basic dye, generally ground wood pulps or unbleached pulps are used and the dye has affinity towards such kind of pulps. And to increase the dry strength of paper, we can add starch, cationic starch or polyacrylamide resins. Gums like locust bean gum and guar gum, guar gum can also be added to increase the dry strength of the paper. Whereas to increase the wet strength of the paper, organic resins can be added. The resins, they change the paper to an insoluble form and which creates a resistance between the fibers. So thereby, when it is wet, it does not dissolve. So a wet strength can be increased. And generally, the papers are held together by hydrogen bond and Van der Waals force. Now, after the pulp has been subjected to beating, the other additives have been added. These need to be bleached and washed. So initially, in earlier times, like before 19th century, for bleaching, calcium and sodium hypochlorites were used and it was single stage treatment and it was done using calcium hypochlorite or chlorinated lime and this had a low consistency. However, it was not practical for craft paper because craft paper, it is difficult to be bleached. So multi-stage bleaching methods were developed and the bleaching was done at different stages. It depends upon the type of pulp that is unbleached pulp and the requirement how much it need to be bleached so depending upon that the multi-stage bleaching system can be used and presently we are using the multi-stage bleaching system and in this the first step is to treat the unbleached pulp with chlorine and this is done by three to four percent gaseous chlorine which is mixed with the pulp at a temperature of 21 to 27 degrees centigrade and this increases the acidity of the pulp and the chlorine gets absorbed by non-carbohydrate components of the pulp and but it has no lightening effect it doesn't brighten the content and usually it is not dissolvable in lignin solubility is less in lignin in the second stage it is alkaline extraction which is done using caustic soda dilute caustic soda it dissolves the chlorinated compounds and then it is washed out and in the third stage it is treated with alkaline hypochlorite to neutralize the solution so we are using caustic soda in the second stage so this need to be neutralized 
and after this we are going for a final wash and small amount of chlorine dioxides it helps in achieving high degree of purification and brightness but at the same time it does not disintegrate the cellulose so this is the multi-stage chlorination or multi-stage bleaching system and brightness of paper it is determined by special reflection meters which contain photoelectric cells which measures the amount of light of selected wavelength that is reflected by the surface and generally the pure magnesium oxide is taken as the standard and on the brightness scale it is given a value of 100 and the other values they are compared with the value of pure magnesium oxide so unbleached sulfide and ground wood it has a value of 50 to 62 in case of peroxide bleached ground wood it is 66 to 72 and single stage hypochloride or single stage bleach sheet it has 80 to 85 multi-stage bleach pulp it has 85 to 88 and multi-stage with chlorine dioxide it has 90 to 94 so the bleaching improves the brightness of the paper now after the bleaching has been done it need to be converted to sheet and it is done in the paper machine the paper stock formed to sheet of the desired weight by filtration pressing and consolidating the sheet with the removal of excess water so in the paper machine the pulp it is spread over the wire or over the spins and then it is pressed to remove the excess water the paper machines they are generally 1.5 to 8 meters long and uh, the operating speed will be 100 to 900 meters per minute and it produces around 1 to 300 tons per day and the paper weight it may vary from a light tissue paper like which has 10 grams per meter square and to boards which has uh, the weight more than 500 grams per meter square so the paper weight can vary from 10 grams to more than 500 grams and all this can be done using one single machine then paper machines they are of two types that is four dringer machine and cylinder machine four dringer machine the diluted suspension of the refined pulp it is deposited on the fine moving vibrating mesh belt and by a sequence of draining and vacuum filtration and pressing the water is reduced to four to eight percent and then it is subjected to drying and from the belt the network of fiber is collected and in the cylinder machine we have six or more wire mesh cylinders which rotate partly immersed in the suspension of cellulose fiber and they pick the fibers during the movement and these fibers are deposited as layers on the moving belt and also water need to be removed from the layers of this fiber mat in the modern fordinger machine we have different parts head box it helps in the continuous flow of wet stock at a continuous constant velocity it is also called breast box or flow box then we have a stock distribution center which distributes the stock to different to the table or it helps in moving the stock to further in the line then we have prodigious table where the sheet is formed and drainage occurs and it supports the table rolls breast roll couch roll suction boxes wire roll and other parts these parts they help in removing the water from the mat and we also have dandy roll which helps in smoothening the surface so it flattens the surface of the sheet also gives finished appearance the next section is press section where the moisture is removed so the wet sheets are received they are pressed between the woolen felts and it delivers the dried sheet we don't go for other kinds of felts in the press section specifically woolen felts are used and moisture need to be reduced and it need to be made compact in the drying session it is passed through a series of rotating steam heated cylinders which removes the remaining moisture content and then the sizing is done in the size press it permits dampening the sheet surface with a solution of starch glue and other material which improves the surface and this also improves the strength of the paper then it is stacked in calendar stack where it is compressed and smoothened and then it is rolled over the reels so this is a frodinger machine and you can see the reels over here the paper will be rolled over the reels once it is finished and the last step in the production of paper is finishing so like the term suggests it is the converting stage where the paper becomes useful for the consumers and it involves use of intricate and fast moving machinery and finishing is generally done by two methods that is wet conversion and dry conversion in the wet conversion method the paper in the roll form it is coated 
impregnated and laminated with materials to improve its properties and these papers are used for special purposes and in the dry conversion method the papers they are converted to bags and gloves boxes and rolls and other sheets so there are different methods of finishing the papers after these two methods wet conversion and dry conversion method finishing can be done and after coating on the surface of the sheet it gives uniformity it also helps in reproducing the images after years and visibility of eye is enhanced it also enhances opacity smoothness glossiness and it is economical in weight therefore coating is important and it can be uh, done using titanium dioxide, calcium carbonate, satin white and combinations of these can also be used to get the finishing. And this can be done on machine coating or off machine coating or extrusion coating can also be done. On machine coating the coating is applied between the drying process whereas off machine coating the coating is done separately. And in the extrusion coating the polyethylene plastic coating is given to papers or paper board and uh, this polyethylene it helps in improving the properties it gives a waterproof resistance to grease water vapor and gas barrier properties it improves the flexibility during heat sealing and it also affords the order and toxicity from the paper so these are the different methods of coating with this we have come to the end of paper manufacturing process in the previous sessions we had seen how the pulp can be developed from the wood and uh, what are the different types of wood, what are the different methods for pulping and once the pulp has been used, how the stock can be prepared and how the stock need to be bleached, what are the different machineries that can be used at each step and before it reaches to the consumer, uh, how it is finished or what are the different methods to finish the process that also we have seen. So with this we will wind up for today. Thank you.